On today's Minute of the Apes, do you know yesterday I went to the men's restroom at my CrossFit gym and I realized one stall was locked, so I went to the next stall and I had to, you know, I had to spend some time in the stall. And I realized that the other stall opened up and the person went right out the bathroom door. Uh, uh, and I walked Maddie. out to the front counter person. I said, that person just went in there, just went in the bathroom, went, went, went into the stall bathroom and just came out and washed your hands. You know, my mom always taught me to wash my hands after going to the bathroom and wash my hands before dinner. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Apes movies, one minute at a time. I'm Todd, and I have to say something about that open. I was so I was about trying to... to find out where Richard was going, so uh-huh. I knew when to cue the music, so I knew when to do it, and I was also playing Star Wars A Galaxy of Heroes, <laughs> and so my attentions were divided. So if my eyes went really wide with you, it's simply because I was like, shit! I was just using mine no. from the actual minute, that's all. <laughs> that's fine. I, that's all. My brain wasn't there. We we actually we joked that we had a hole in between in between the episodes that we didn't record Talking that was about, about Star Wars: The Galaxy of Heroes. How we're absolutely fucking sick of how they change the game and do things. By the way, uh, yeah, that whole section in territory wars is open yeah. if you, oh, because yeah. I'm just telling you, I'm grinding. Well, we, well, we just, let's, let's I, stop I'm, bored hey, audience. But hang on, I'm <laughs> I'm doing a terror. I I just took down a. A team on Territory Wars. Yay. Yay. Fucker. Okay. I just took down some new notes. Okay, well, hang on. Hang on. We got got a minute here. If you'll you'll tell us what's going on, I'll play the minute. We can all play the game while it's going on. Okay. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) All right. We're going to start minute 29 with Davidson and an unnamed human female being dragged to their feet and ends with Senator Nato saying, Companion's been a fortune grooming herself. All right. While we all play Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, here comes minute 29. Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Rise when your master enters. <laughs> Wild humans in my house. Yes, but this one seems different. Different? How could it be different? You can't tell one from the other. My guests are here. Keep the savage ones out of sight. And especially from General Thade. And you'd better be nice to him. And wash your hands before dinner. Senator Nardo, good evening. Good My dear, you look lovely tonight. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm having a bad hair day. Yet she spends a fortune grooming herself. As of minute 29, we have an Oberon's worth of apes and humans, two displaced pods worth of humans and apes, wild humans, and an ape city. All right, here comes our visual recap. We see a bunch of humans So as... the visual recap is, I'm fighting these Geonosians, and I cannot get this one that respawns every time to die enough so I can kill the guy who respawns. All right, anyway, sorry. Anyways. <laughs> so visually, we get very well-dressed humans. We go into a situation where now we see that Leo and Dana are in there as well. They are pulled up by a new gorilla. We didn't see a new chimpanzee on the scene who is portrayed by a great actor who I believe recently passed away. Um, We go along. He is disgusted by the scent of wild humans. We get a wild human moment. And he covers his nose. We have a little banter back and forth as... I just took another team down. Good. Uh, we see <laughs> Ari checking out, I guess, checking for fleas on Leo or something like that, yeah. or in his ears. A little bit of back or and maybe forth. maybe that's just a little playful, lovely rooming, but who knows. And then David Warner's character kind of going out. And then we get the very odd moment of a orangutan with a chimpanzee. So apparently there's cross-species love. 
Um, and we see the self-grooming issues of the woman, and we see the very, very orangutan-like makeup of this person. That is the end of our minute. All right. I am even doing it, too. Uh, all all gonna, Star Wars Galaxy Heroes So what are we aside. doing? We're establishing, we're establishing Ari's house. We're establishing her father. Yes. Now, in, in that, behind them, and, they, have, they have cages. So there are... This, this kind of looks like a kitchen it, it type area. Yeah. And we it's see... A, let's call it like the servant's quarter slash kitchen, yeah. So there are bars behind them and a little cave-like dwelling. Um, and we find out... I think the biggest thing we find out is wild humans in my house. So it's the first time, really, that we've 100%, 100% drawn that, that a line they're of they're domesticated wild. They're domesticated versus wild. Yeah. Versus... Well, even, even their attire is a little more simple than the servants that have been there for a while, right? right. The servants that are there have more kind of almost Victorian uh, or turn of the century outfits versus these just kind of burlap sacks that Dana and Marky Mark are wearing. Well, that's because they've just been brought home. You know, you just bring your pet home. You might have a, a collar. They're still wearing the collar that they have from the shelter. You right. haven't had time because you didn't know you're going to get this dog at the time. It's a surprise. You walked in and said, I'm going to rescue these two. So you didn't have time to get them the nice clothes, the nice collars and all the stuff that the, the domesticated pets have. Okay, okay, real quick. While while we're talking about this, again, the sets just look so bad I and know, flat. So flat. They, and the thing is, they set it up for. Uh, sometimes Google hears things. I know. Things I thought that does that to me at home too. If you look at like it, they've got all these candles around the top and everything. Mm-hmm. Have it lit by the candles. Have this a whole lot darker in there. Have it flickering it's a very light. Going. Flat set. Ha- have a fireplace going and right. the light coming from that. I mean. Where is all this unmotivated light coming from? It is it's so well lit. Where is the light coming from? You know where it's coming from? Let's be economical. Let's shoot. Let everything's well lit. We know we're going to get complete exposure. I fun fun little aside. I just recent, I listened to an audio book called uh, "Leave the Gun, Take the Cannoli: The Making of the Godfather." Mm-hmm. And it talks about Gordon Willis was known as the king of darkness and that they would, they, the, the, the guy, dailies the cannoli, went, I have an eating problem. <laughs> the, 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 the guys looking at the dailies were like, we can't see anything because he would literally shoot it so that there were poles of light they had to step into. And that's, and if you watch the Godfather, it's a very dark movie. Yeah. I wish somebody had shot this a little bit like this because there's no texture to it and therefore there's no life to it. I thought the same thing, Sean, when it goes to that wide shot where we see is it's we truly see a kitchen. There. Yeah, yeah. It's just this it looks more like a sitcom than it does a movie. It's just very well lit. There's no anything to it. And if you if you allow that darkness to come in, it actually applies a little bit of tension around these characters. They feel yeah. it's even more confined. It, it, more tra- entrapped, yeah. I my thing that really even stood out past that too is when we get to David Warner's makeup. David Warner, the great actor that, I mean, again, I think he just passed away within the last year. I'm pretty sure uh, if you can look that up. Yeah, yeah. Has done tons of things. I, I know him from being um, Jack the Ripper in Time After Time, the, that take on H.G. Wells from the, the 80s, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, July 24th. Yeah, and then he was in one of the Star Trek films. He, great actor. He was in Babylon 5. Was he in Babylon yes, 5? Yes, he was. His makeup. What I what I started thinking, how they did this this thing where the snouts are not as snouty, but well, it kind of also it feels to me like it depends on the characters. It like does. it feels like the females are a little more snouty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the males, like you look at a Paul Giamatti, almost feels like no snout. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like his mouth with right. just a goatee on him. Well, to that, I'm wondering what because if you look at Warner, he's got a little bit of hair coming out the side of his lips. Why not put a little more hair down, you know, make that mustache type thing cover a little bit more because it it ends up looking like a human jaw beneath it to an extent with some hair and stuff on it. If they just done something to cover it, it Why well, maybe might it would have made it, you know, over it after doing Star Trek and said, "All right, look. I I am not a mouth guy. I'm just a head guy." Mhm. Just I'm head pieces. I I do Klingons. And that's it. There are moments where I think a lot of this makeup is very cool, and there are moments where I'm just like, it looks me. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know that there's a whole lot to unpack other than wild humans and that she likes him and she's picking lice on him. Well, we're about to have uh, guests arriving, you know. Um, <sighs> he says they all look the same, right? I mean, that's that's a typically a reference to... Um, uh, right. Uh, I 
Uh, uh, keep the savage ones out of sight. And she's just continuing to pick at him like she's cleaning him. But it's there's something... I guess it's supposed to be seductive or ownership of it that I'm not quite sure. Right. Uh, he does announce that General Thade is coming over, so we know we're about to get well, General Thade. Okay, so, you know, you, you're saying this... Is, uh, let's try to think a bit... I know we were talking about in previous minutes of her looking like she's going to want to make out with him, but I'm thinking about it this way. If, she, if we try to frame it in a different way, think of the humans as dogs. Always think of them as dogs in every aspect. She's at a pet... She's at, at 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 the pound picking out a pet. You go to kiss a dog. You're not making. You're not gonna look like you're gonna fuck it. You're going to oh, mm, mm, I love you, doggy sweet. She brings the dog home. Now she's stroking the dog lovingly in front of her dad, saying, "Oh, look, look. I I know he's wild. I just brought him in, but he we're gonna make him sweet." She's not. I I know we were making fun of it earlier, but if you put in that light. She is just loving on this pet the way she we would love on a dog, and it's, yeah. there's no sexual connotation it, it, it to it. Might have made, now, the fact that it's a human and a human in real life it, gives it that sexual It connotation. might have made more sense if she had some uh, standing over him, if he were seated, if he were kneeling, if he were something. Mm. And she, he was, she was they able got to stand when the master enters. She was able to try it and made him stand, but... Yeah. Because of the height difference, she's having to stand behind his shoulder almost as if she's gently kissing his shoulder and picking at his ear and his hair. Like the the height difference makes it even more weird because right. she can't actually well, she can't actually give that kind of petting affectionate. It, it would have helped if she had also pet the other humans as she walked in, like give little loving strokes to the the man and the woman that stood up that are already dressed nice. Right. And then she, you know, maybe pets the female, wild female that we don't know her name yet, even though we know what her well, name uh, is. Well, loving and then she's too. Marky Mark grooming loving it wouldn't it wouldn't the, the one thing about the wild humans comment that didn't make a lot of sense to me is he just walks in wild humans and it, why didn't he acknowledge his servants or why didn't his servants acknowledge him and then he looks over and sees why are there why are there wild humans in my house right it just is this weird boop we're over here and we're going to say it and here's another thing you know, wild versus domesticated. So we can domesticate animals because their breeding cycle is relatively short compared to us. Mm -hmm. You know, they can have puppy. Uh, we're just going to keep, I'm going to keep using dogs as an example. They can have puppies relatively young, relatively quickly, and a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Humans, while they can have babies relatively young, takes a while to gestate, and they do not have them relatively quickly over the course of their life. Right. So... While we have domestic or wild versus domesticated humans, that's got to be a long breeding cycle for humans to become domesticated because it, you know, that's eight, a hundred years is five or six generations of right. people. And, right. you know, you compared a hundred years to dogs where that's hundreds of generations right. that have become more domesticated. Anyway, sorry. Well, the, the direction is Leo looks up at Ari meets her eyes again looking right at her she is flustered and turns away so <laughs> okay so, so they're yeah they're, trying, they're putting the, they're trying the to sexual they're stuff they're trying to play yeah. but I, I don't think she's necessarily supposed to be standing on top of him picking at him but i think they needed to put them in the same shot and so they just kind of made that happen uh her dad says you know his guest is here keep the savage out of sight especially thade and this and is you, where we get thade's name for the first time officially, okay I think, yeah and he goes and you better be nice to him so so they've met we're, before. We're expecting, well, the way she interacted with Limbo at the prison thing, now we're expecting probably some type of conversation between Thade and his daughter. We are, and in, in knowing that she used feminine wiles with Limbo. Limbo, are we to assume when you better be nice to him that that's something that is, as a relationship, what, what is it that you better be nice to him? Have they just simply been at odds? Has he been trying that tried to fix her up? Have it, they it, met it, before? I mean, it yeah. at least tells, at least, teases that bit of storytelling you know there's something to come and when, i appreciate when that. we get into the next minute there is a scene that was deleted that might make some shed some light on what you're suggesting okay uh so he, he, oh I, no sorry uh, so I, I just had a little note here when the the because i was looking through my notes as you were talking uh and, and this goes back to previous minutes where i was talking about it's weird that the females have such human hair what i think is strange about it is for the most part if you look the males have ape hair mm -hmm. it's only the females that have human 
type that we would call like human styled hair. Right, right. Like they're, they look like they're wearing wigs. Yeah, they they're, like they're wearing wigs. Yeah. They, uh, we we saw um, with uh, Limbo earlier. You know, he had like uh, he was kind of balding red hair, but it, right. it looks like what we see in orangutan out right. in the wild does. Right. It, it's not styled or it's just kind of wild balding hair. But all the female characters in this look like they have human stylized hair and the males don't that that's i think what stands out it, it may makes them be. look different so then it's I, also that the the females are wearing that they alert they wear makeup they there's make eyeliner up, yeah. there's lipstick well, yeah. that, bring, that brings into the kind of the end of the minute right we jump and it says uh a long table and garlands of fruit and flowers party of apes engaged small talk at the front door uh ari's father exchanges uh ape touches with senator nando he says uh senator nando Good evening, Ma. You look lovely tonight. And then his uh, female companion says, "I'm having a bad hair day," and she sighs and strokes the fur on her face. But we've already remarked about the fact that the female apes largely are Fa- hairless hair- on their face. On their face, but yeah. she does have a little bit. So it's just kind of unusual that they're singling pointing out the fact that she's specifically talking about her face that right. is having the bad hair day, not not the wig she's got on top of her head. Um, uh, and Nano kind of, I guess as you would to a spouse or a wife or a girlfriend, yet she spends a fortune grooming herself. Uh, uh, and I think she concludes with that. I'm worth every penny. You know, something along, along those lines And that minute. I'm this minute or the next, but we're, we're, we're about to get into a party. Uh, I'm going back on the fact that everything is so poorly lit that I can't just see right. these characters yeah. entering the room as much as I would like, particularly if we're going to point out hair days and things like that. I have no sense of who these people are other than one's a Senator. Uh, we do, let's do acknowledge the woman talking about the bad hair day. Oh, who is it? That would be. <gasps> Say it. Say it. Lisa. Yes. Marie. Yeah. The absolutely beautiful, lovely, amazing. And at that time, still Tim Burton's partner. At this particular time, yes. Uh, yeah. They were together and, and uh, we uh, can talk about what happens afterwards. But uh, Now, we, we uh, they have not said this character's name, so I think no. we should hold on to that. Well, it. It's one of those. I think you and I have great reverence for her, and that's the reason I could not wait oh, I, for. I, I, yeah, she's after after stunning and and, and pretty, Mars attacks alone. Yeah. I'm uh-huh. just like uh-huh. God. Yeah, uh-huh. learning to walk with that float with that model where she's uh-huh. not actually on something. Well, yeah, just, she, she just knows how to walk and look. Yeah, like studying how to do yeah. that. I'm like, wow, that, that is one of those amazing. Drag, drag queens all over yeah. the world. Like, <laughs> yeah. rewind, pause, rewind, pause, rewind. That is pause. one movie that I after it was over, I looked at my wife and I could just tell, uh oh. <laughs> she was like, that was the dumbest thing I've ever uh-huh. seen. And I was like, okay, yeah. well, you did not grow up watching this kind of movie. I love that. Yeah. Movie. Uh, God, and you said, woman, I got more movies to show you. Well, the dumbest okay. thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Hang on. That goes Hold into my right beer. now that so much of Tim Burton is in that movie. So little of Tim Burton right. is in this right. movie. I, this I think this I, should have been an entrance. And I think I've hundred percent, regardless of the fact that it was your wife at the time, right? Mm. There is still something missing in, in the entrance of apes into a dinner like, party that should have just been a so, breathtaking. So Absolutely. we've seen Helena Bonham Carter uh, doing ape things, jumping up a wall, swinging herself. She should have come like swinging in on a chandelier, spinning in, flying down, boom, and well, then I mean, her. You might, you might get your wish later on. And then you know, you know then like. <laughs> Oh my hair! While her husband then comes lumbering in behind her, or something like that. Right. Yeah, I the, the total movie. It, it, I I think it may feel less like a Tim Burton movie than any other movie. But I've what I was gonna say is, I I think yeah. you talked about it. I can't remember if we talked about it in previous minutes or in real life, but I think. It, Tim Burton does better when he's not doing adaptations, when he's doing original stuff. So Batman's not his best stuff. A- adaptations uh, of a- adaptations Edward, of 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 uh, Edward mo- already existing movie properties or like anything. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, Edward Scissorhands, good. Um, Ed Wood. Ed Wood, good. Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks, good. Um, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> not good. Um, uh, Any of the Alice in Wonderland? Uh, oh Never Not saw good. this. No, don't even know. I mean, when he's doing somebody else's work, it feels like he is 
that's the the paycheck well, work. Well, well, let me yeah. say versus, some, of, some of the stuff these adapted. Frank and Weenie. Some of the stuff yeah. these adapted that were actually other people's books were were fine. It, I mean, it really, Big Fish was a book. It and really there was it really right? comes to reimagining movie properties that seems to be like his Achilles heel. Well, I think that Sean hit something. That I think there there are paycheck movies, and this feels like a paycheck. It movie. does. It does, and which made me wonder why Helena Bonham Carter wanted to be in it because up to this point she'd been doing kind of largely period stuff, but maybe that's why she wanted oh, to yeah. finally do maybe. something big and blockbuster. All right, I think that's it for this minute because we're we're I'm, i want to leave on the effervescent lisa marie on my screen yes, and just enjoy yes. her all right we will be back tomorrow to wrap up the week until then everyone have a great day bye bye everybody bye.